What is going on Diablo 2 fans, Debrunsky here. In today's video, I'm going to be breaking down the patch 2.4 notes. So there is a lot of content to go through. This is going to be a very informal video, not too much editing, and I'm only going to highlight some of the very key standout points. So bear with me. Going to have timestamps in the description below though, so I will highlight kind of what I think is most important. So much content to cover, but I do want to point out one thing, and I feel like it's very easy to just read something and then judge and say, oh, that's going to be garbage, that's going to be trash. I mean, for those that have played D2 quite a bit, you might have a pretty good compass on some of the changes, but we don't really know until we actually test stuff out in PTR. Like the Act 1 Mercenary, for example, I was a little bit bummed that they're not adding support ores, but the more that I was thinking about it, if it's casting Freezing Arrow frequently, that's going to provide great crowd control. So until we can actually test out some of this stuff, we really won't know. So I just want to make that very clear. But first we'll jump in to the Amazon. Now they made a couple interesting changes here with Impale and Fend. So Impale has an interruptible attack. AR has been removed, so it's kind of like Smite. And the skill now slows target. So could be pretty interesting to mess around with Ubers. I mean, I have done Ubers on an Amazon using Jab and just stacking Crushing Blow. The impale changes might be interesting. Fend has a 100% increase attack speed. Will that match a Zealer? We'll see. Fend is basically like the two-handed spear version of Zeal for an Amazon. Well, kind of, if there's only a single monster there, it doesn't strike multiple times. It just strikes that one monster. But if there's like five monsters around you, it will strike all five. So it'll be interesting to test out. But 100% increase attack speed, that's pretty crazy. So moving on to the lightning skill tree or the lightning Javazon skills, they've basically removed one damage synergy, then added additional damage buffs from the other skills to compensate. So freeing up kind of like dual hybrid spec builds, that's interesting. For Plague Javelin, they have changed the poison duration. It's now fixed to three seconds and they've buffed up the damage. So using Poison Javazon with potentially an Act 5 Mercenary, crocking lower res, might be okay. We'll have to test out, but it'll be pretty interesting. Now for passive and magic, gonna skip most of this stuff. I mean, they've buffed inner sight, slow missiles, whatever. That's, eh, they'll never use those skills. Valkyrie, they've adjusted cooldown time, that's okay. The changes to dodge and avoid will be interesting. I never use these skills on a Javazon because they can literally interrupt you from like moving or trying to attack. You'll just sit there stuck in those animations. We'll have to test it out, but it says we'll no longer be locked out. So that's interesting. We'll have to test it, but that could be a pretty good quality of life improvement. Now I do think that the bow and crossbow skill tree has received some of the biggest buffs. So freezing arrow. They've reduced the mana cost per level from 0.5 to 0.25. This has always been a mana intensive character, but it is an improvement. There was ways around it, like extra points into mana, silk weaves, potentially tur runes, etc. But that is a good change. Magic arrow, they've increased the amount of physical damage converted to magic. Maybe that will be okay. Maybe it'll replace guided arrow. I doubt it. Guided arrow has received a buff. Strafe is pretty huge. They've removed the 25% damage reduction from the skill. So for those that don't know, Strafe takes your like your regular damage, brings it down to 75%, then starts adding a scaling damage buff from additional skills. So an increased attack rating and then having a buff on this, it might make Strafe comparable to multi-shot. We'll have to see, especially with the new bows like Mist, having that freezes target from the Chamrun could be pretty crazy. Now I'm a little bit disappointed with Immolation Arrow. They have not removed the cooldown on it, so it has this really annoying cooldown on it. It would have been cool to see it gone. I don't understand why you can spam Freezing Arrow, but you can't spam Immolation Arrow. But they did, I guess, to kind of like compensate, buff up the damage from Exploding Arrow. So you can alternate back and forth between like firing an Immolation Arrow to get the fire damage on the ground and then jump into Exploding Arrow. I'm excited to see the fire Exploding Arrow damage buffed. Or the chance for fireball zone to have a chance but at the same time a little bit disappointed from immolation arrow not having its cooldown removed so moving on to the assassin skill tree starting off with martial arts they've essentially increased the baseline attack rating for all of the skills and they increased the percent attack rating bonus per level 
they have changed the way that charges can be spent. So before, for example, Phoenix Strike, if you built up three charges and you release the third charge, it would take you down to nothing. You can now release three, two, and then one, like do the charges in individual stages. This is a build that I have honestly never played end game because it sucks so bad. Will it be better? I mean, maybe I'm, this is probably gonna be the last build that I'm gonna test. So I'm not gonna spend too much time talking about it. There was an interesting change here with Dragonflight. So the casting delay has been removed. So you can kind of teleport unlimitedly with an assassin, but you're doing it from monster to monster. So as long as you're a monster, you can just teleport around. That's kind of cool. But yeah, I don't really care too much about the martial arts tree, to be honest. Shadow and Discipline, there's a couple interesting changes here. So they reduced some of the casting delays for Shadow Warrior and Shadow Master. Venom, they changed the buff duration from, I believe it's 0.4 seconds. I think that's a mistake from 0.4 to 12. It's, it was never four. They did it to match Burst of Speed and Fade. I'm not really sure why they did that unless there's a bug that I'm not aware of. Let me know in the comment section below. But I always thought that the whole purpose of Venom was it was an insane amount of damage over a super short time frame and that's what made it very good. I I don't actually know the benefit of that. Again, just let me know in the comment section below if you guys know why. The Trap Skill Tree is interesting. So they've removed some of the synergies in the Lightning Tree and then again increased the damage elsewhere for kind of more hybrid setups similar to the Javazon. What I'm most excited for is the buff to Wake of Fire. I think that I'm going to spend a lot of time playing as a Wake of Fire traps in using Fire Blast and Death Sentry. I think that's going to be a really good combo for farming areas like the Stony Tombs early on. They did change some of the durations for stuff like Blade Shield and the damage value for Blade Fury. Blade Sentinels had the cooldown shortened a little bit and changed the synergy damage. I probably won't use these skills too much. I mean, I will mess around. Maybe I'm just like meta washed and I'm just obsessed with like just traps in only, but that's all I've really ever played beside a Kixin. Some interesting changes overall for the assassin, but it's not like moving the rev limiter too much for me. So for the barbarian, again, I'm not too excited for a lot of the changes, but this is my least favorite character in Diablo 2 by far. Some cool kind of quality of life stuff that's been changed. So for example, battle command at one hard point, it now has a 30 second duration as opposed to the five before. So that's just to match up with battle orders. And they did the same with shout. They have buffed up the damage for Warcry. I asked for changing it so that it scaled a little bit the radius per level. I thought people would use it more frequently. I just, you know, Singer Barbs are kind of like low players difficulty farming builds. I don't think that this will ever have that good of damage. So I think that a better use of like experimenting would have been to just to buff the radius a little bit. Grim Ward is probably the most interesting here. So I think people are going to use this quite a bit because it's when you turn a corpse into a grim ward it slows down monsters and increases the amount of damage that they take or reduces their physical damage reduction this is going to be a skill that i think people will use a lot as a barbarian so moving on to the combat mastery skill tree they just added percent chance to pierce on throwing weapons to try and buff up the throw barb with double throw again it could pair interestingly with the rude word wisdom Maybe in a th double throw throwing mastery helmet that you roll wisdom in for chance to pierce. Maybe paired with razor tail, you get 100% pierce. Again, just kind of speculating. The changes to leap and leap attack are they're interesting. So increasing the damage, damage synergies, and the speed of leap. Again, we'll have to test it around, but it looks good on paper. Switched around the synergies for berserk. So shout synergy has been replaced with battle orders because. It's kind of wasted skill points because Berserk brings your defense down to zero. So pumping points at the Bellers instead of Shout if you want to go to Berserk Barb makes more sense. Because you're not getting that big damage buff because you put 20 points into Shout, get a really high defense, hit with Berserk, it's down to zero. So that was a good change there. They've increased the damage throw baseline for double throw. Will it make it really good? I'm still kind of hesitant, but it could be a little bit better. So the next character is the Druid. I am most excited for some of these changes. First, starting off with the Elemental Skill Tree. When I first read over the Fire Tree, I was a little bit disappointed because I was expecting to read Volcano with no cooldown time. And I have seen some like increased damage synergies. They have speed of Molten Boulders a little bit quicker. 
All really good stuff. Armageddon, big physical damage increase. But it was a little bit disappointing because I was expecting no cooldown. I just wanted to run around spamming Volcano everywhere. But then, the more that I thought about it, they're changing the cooldowns so they're independent of each other. So, you can cast Armageddon. And when you're running around, you can cast a Volcano. Then switch to casting a Fissure. Then switching to Molten Boulder, shooting one or two. And then switching back to your cycle. So going Volcano, Fissure, Molten Boulder. Volcano, Fissure, Molten Boulder. And that will be a good combination of fire and physical damage so it'll work really well if you don't already have infinity and then armageddon they said they're substantially buffing the physical damage i did ask for trying to kind of make a couple more boulders fall more frequently because it is very sporadic in its damage but overall i think that's pretty good changes again i think i'm most excited for fire druid at first i wasn't but just being able to cycle those skills it could be pretty powerful cycle and armor can now be cast in werewolf or werebear form that's pretty interesting i want to try and mess around with a hurricane werewolf so shape shifting to werewolf using fury and then maxing out cyclone armor and then all the synergies for hurricane so you'll have really good elemental absorb you'll be running around hurricanes doing cool damage and then you're striking everything with physical damage so looking forward to that and again yeah they just mentioned here you can cast hurricane in werewolf or werebear form so that's good and then moving on to shape shifting I was a little bit disappointed with rabies. I was expecting a little bit more of a damage buff. 2% extra damage synergy per level. That's, it's not good. The build already sucks and it's not really anything other than a cow farmer. Sure, the plague mercenary might make it a little bit better, but I was pretty disappointed seeing that. Werewolf, I think they said, was it more attack rating? Yeah, Fury's more attack rating. They made changes to the tooltip so that the werewolf and werebear are a little bit better. I do think, a sleeper build here is going to be a Maul Fireclaw setup. So they've increased the stun duration cap for Maul, and they've increased the baseline damage and attack rating. And they've also added a raw damage increase, so 75% on Fireclaw, and they removed some of the synergies. So if you can invest less points into Fireclaw, get the max damage, while at the same time pumping a bunch of points into Maul to have more physical damage and then to stun stuff, I think it's going to lead to a very powerful character again it will be single target striking but i do think that people will sleep on this build stun good fire damage and good physical damage so it should be pretty good the summoning skill tree they've made quite a few changes changes to make oak sage and hard wolverine and spirit of the barbs have a little bit better survivability so they're just buffing the physical resistance of them i would have liked to seen i don't know maybe immune to elemental i do think that these changes are good but anyone that's messed around with a druid doing like a bail run, a soul shoots one bolt of lightning, your spirit is dead. So this isn't really addressing anything with the resummoning them frequently from elemental damage. Although it is a change in the right direction, so that's good. Ravens have received a pretty significant damage buff, but they've scaled the number of hits from 12 down to 5. So you're going to have to summon them constantly it's going to be you're just going to be like a piano build constantly summoning ravens so it could be very effective but i think this is going to be a very annoying build to play the summon spirit wolf i'm pretty intrigued with the fact that they're adding cool damage so if you're summoning five of these a lot of cool damage could slow down your monsters and provide you great crowd control just think of wind druid with five of these tele stomping around and they're hitting stuff for extra cool damage plus your hurricane or maybe hurricane and werewolf etc and they substantially increase the base life, so by 80%. So is the damage scaling? They said they increased it by 10%. Is it going to be enough to actually do damage? I'm still very hesitant, but I do think it's going to be good for crowd control. Now they did sort of the same thing with the Dire Wolf, increase the life and damage. They changed the life synergy around a little bit. Again, I just don't think that they're going to be, like if you can't summon them all at the same time, you can't really see them being super good. The Summon Grizzly, I was really surprised by these changes because the main issue with the Summon Grizzly was not that he didn't have enough life. Like, he could tank everything. It was always a, like a one-point wonder for Wind Druid, etc. Shapeshifting Druid, you always cast one because it was a super good tank. Didn't do much damage, but it could tank a lot. So they've increased the base life and the life increase per level. So... I would not be surprised if a summon grizzly has like 50,000 life if you were to max it and have oak sage. So kind of overkill and maybe the wrong direction there in my opinion. Again, just let me know in the comments below if you guys agree or disagree. They have increased the scaling of life with poison creeper. 
and it does receive extra damage from rabies so poison creeper might actually be viable to summon in addition to a rabies druid again i'm not really sure how good it's going to be carrion vine and solar creeper they've just basically increased the values of what they heal and recover from mana these vines i never really used i never thought they were good because you always had to wait around for them to consume corpses to then receive the bonus so they did increase like the percent that you get but i don't think it's going to make too much of a difference so moving on to the necro they've made some pretty substantial changes to raise skeleton mage so they've increased the damage quite a bit so cool damage 50 percent lightning 5 percent and poison 750 percent and they increased their life it might make for an interesting build like all shape fishing skillers max out skeletal mage and then telly stomp cast little res have them get the first kill with maybe like an Act 3 Mercenary and then Corpse Explode. Although I'm going to touch on Act 3 Mercenaries a little bit. I'm a little doubtful that it's going to be more effective than just using like Amp Damage and regular Summons. Although I do think it's going to be better. They did announce some changes to the Blood Golem and Iron Golem. And Fire Golem. They increased the Holy Fire level from 1 to 2. Blood Golem now has more life. But no one is going to use these two Golems. I'm telling you gonna be inside iron golem and clay golem this changes nothing unfortunately now for poison and bone i am pretty intrigued by some of these changes so they've added one or two percent damage synergies to bone spear and bone spirit so it could be more damage and they increase the damage absorb for bone armor so you might be able to get like two and a half three k physical absorb with a really good scale bone necro so it could make for a very tanky build will the damage be that much of a difference it potentially could be enough to get the first kill quicker than corpse explode is this gonna mess pvp probably but i don't think that's a big deal sorry i guess i'm just horrible i think more focus should be put on pvm versus pvp but that's just me they did adjust weaken um increase the damage that it weakens one percent per level i don't see anybody using this though i think people are just gonna use decrepify because it's already so much more powerful to begin with now moving on to the paladin they didn't really change anything with the defensive or tree that's fine i'm going out on a limb here though i think that the paladin is going to be one of the strongest it already is one of the strongest characters but it's gonna be even stronger in patch 2.4 and that's because of some of the changes that they made from or excuse me they made to holy fire and holy shock and holy freeze so i just recently made a video on the orden and like dual dream setups so they are adding a ridiculous damage buff. So if exterior of the radius, it's 100% damage. And then as they get close to you, the damage doubles. So you're literally doubling the damage of dual dreams. And then if you have like hand of justice and dragon body armor, you're then doubling the damage. And the Orden and Tesla Den is already one of the strongest melee characters. And then you're again, doubling the damage. This will be... Pretty interesting, but if we're going to add this much damage to the Holy Freeze Auras and Holy Shock and stuff, maybe let's buff the Fire Druid a little bit more. Thorns no longer returns a percentage when hit. It deals a flat amount of damage. Will a max Thorns build be any good? Maybe. Sanctuary? The same thing, the 100 to 200% radius. I mean, this is a skill that's never really used. They have made a couple changes to the combat skill tree with probably the most notable one being Fist of Heavens. They reduced the cooldown delay from 1 to 0.4 seconds. Is it going to be enough to be as good as like Path of Diablo or Project Diablo 2 Fist of Heavens? Um, not really sure. The jury's kind of out on that one. But definitely the offensive auras in those builds are going to be, I think, the strongest offensive melee builds in patch 2.4 so for the sorceress skill tree i'm very disappointed with what they did with the cold tree i don't think it needed tons of buffing to begin with they did do some interesting changes to kind of distinguish between the different armors so shiver armor increased damage chilling armor gets even more frozen armor is the base radius but with the way a lot of the skill trees work like maxing blizzard or going maxing meteor sorceress or maxing hydro sorceress or maxing lightning character you don't have many hard points once you've maxed out all those synergies. So I just don't see myself ever like maxing out chilling armor to achieve some of these benefits. I'm sure somebody might theorycraft like a really cool end game max damage setup, but I doubt it. But the biggest dis disappointment to me, excuse me, is frozen orb. I don't understand why they didn't shorten the cooldown time 
remove the cooldown time or buff the damage a little bit. This skill is ass compared to Blizzard. It is not even remotely competitive on anything other than like playthrough on Nightmare. Like it's garbage. Nobody runs it. I don't understand why they didn't want to address that and give you another option. Like everything that I see here, people aren't going to use Frozen Nova at all. People will still stay Blizzard. They'll still Moat Trick and no one's going to touch Frozen Orb. Some of the changes to the armors are nice. I just think this was a really missed opportunity. Not at least, I don't know, maybe giving it a damage buff or shortening the cooldown a little bit. Pretty disappointed with that. The lightning skill tree though does definitely make up for that. I think one of the biggest things here is going to be Nova Sorceress in this patch because the way they change the synergies around. So static field synergizes Nova. So you go 20 static field, 20 into Nova, and then Thunderstorm also receives a damage synergy from static field. So just going 20 Nova, 20 static, 20 Thunderstorm, you're doing a really cool kind of like trifecta attack. Is the damage going to be insane? No, but 20 hard points plus 20 times 7% damage synergy buff, that's going to be enough to, to hit harder on P1 or P3. It's not going to like kill Bale, but I think this combo will work really well together. Energy shield, not even going to mention it. They didn't address the mana burn bug, so energy shield is shit. For the fire skill tree, Inferno, kind of similar to Arctic Blast. You can move while you're casting this skill. Is it going to be very good? I just don't see myself using it. Probably will be going the same charge bolt static field route. Lays have increased the damage energies. Firewalls, the same. Meteors, the same. Hydra is the big one here. There's no casting delay, so it's removed. This is what I wanted to see on Frozen Orb, but we're not quite there yet. They have limited the number of Hydras to six, but you can infinitely cast them whenever you want to. So it's kind of like traps. I never really understood why there was a countdown delay. So it's kind of like a trap sin. So you can cast a couple Hydras and then you can recast and reposition them. So this will work really well for gameplay. And then it has received a 2% damage synergy buff from Firebolt and Fireball. So that's really good. Mercenaries, this is one that Again, I'm a little bit disappointed on. I'm trying to be very optimistic. They've added Freezing Arrow and Explosion Arrow to the Cold and Fire Boa. Now, I hope that these are going to be shooting very frequently because there is the potential if you're shooting Freezing Arrow all the time with maybe Treachery, something like Mist for end game, early game, you could go maybe Harmony, so you get faster run walk, but some really good fast like treachery and, and Dario's visage or something so you can shoot as frequently as possible it could provide some really good crowd control I don't think anyone's gonna use the explosion arrow I just think everybody's gonna use freezing arrow for crowd control they did note later when we go over the room words you can roll insight in a bow maybe rock an insight freezing arrow setup but do you want to sacrifice the damage from the mercenary for the crowd control or do you just rock an insight act to mercenary Act 2 marks are the same, other than the fact that you can now hire any type in Nightmare and Hell difficulty. You don't have to go back to Hell if you want to switch between Might and Holy Freeze. Thorn's Aura level scaling increase. It will now continue scaling up beyond the highest threshold up to a maximum level, so I doubt anyone's going to use Thorns. This is my gut feeling. The Act 3 Mercenaries. So they have updated the skills that they cast in the AI so that they shoot the more powerful spell more often. They have increased the base lifeline and defense, so it should help with their survivability a little bit, but one of the biggest issues that I think with the Act 3 Mercenaries, they just don't do enough damage. Now for Cold, it says that they'll cast Glacial Spike more often. Glacial Spike level scaling increased, okay, so it might be a little bit more damage. But then for Fire, they added Enchant, increased the chance you're going to cast Fireball, added Firebolt, but there's nothing mentioned about damage here that I can see. And the same thing kind of for lightning, so that's static field, that's nice. Charge bolt scales, scaling is increased, okay. An increased chance of casting lightning, but I don't see any damage buff to lightning. So unless like charge bolt is synergizing lightning and I'm missing something, I just don't think there's enough damage here. And then moving on to the Act 5 Mercenary, increase life scaling, bash is no longer capped at 80, stun's no longer capped at 80. Battlecry, I don't know if they're going to be enough 
to use Overnight to Mercenary again. I was really hoping for an Aura. Maybe with the Plague Rune Word for poison damage setups, but again, Jerry's out on that one, but trying to be optimistic. So all these Rune Words I've covered, Plague, Pattern, Unbending Will, Wisdom. I do want to talk a little bit about Obsession. So this is a very interesting Rune Word that I think is almost there. I think if you just look at the stats, like the Ford All Skills, Chance to Cast Weaken, 65 FCR, 60 FHR, Vitality, Energy, Maximum Life, Regenerative Mana, All Res, MF, and Gold Find. It looks good. But if you kind of like separate it, to me, it just looks like Hodo and Spirit slapped on top of each other for a Zod rune. Now it is true you can roll in a staff, so you could get like a plus three to Blizzard staff, so you could get up to plus seven skills, but I just don't see myself using this too often. I do want to make at least one, and it might drive up the price of Zod a little bit, but it might be cool to use on like a Wind Druid, maybe a Fire Druid, but I think Death Fathom is going to be more damage for a Cold Sorceress. Aussie is going to be better for more Magic Find. Crescent Moon is probably going to be better for more damage for Lightning. Maybe, I don't know. I just, it, it's a very cool rumor, but if they maybe added like a negative Fire, Lightning, and a plus Cold Damage roll, kind of like added Man Song's Lesson stats onto it, but switched the negative Cold Rest to plus Cold Damage. I think just adding that little bit of change would have made it worth the Zod Rune. Everything else we've covered, Flickering, Flame, and Mist. Although one interesting thing about Mist is it rolls 8 to 12 Concentration Aura. So the rumored card that we saw was level 9. So level 12 is more damage. Might make for a better Boson with the improved Strafe, but again, time will tell. Now the changed Harada Cube recipes, you can now up set weapons, items, and set armors. Now there's not too many sets that I think I would really want to up other than in some scenarios if you don't need the damage from laying hands the two-piece death set with the belt glove combo for 30 is and the poison res that cannot be frozen might be interesting but i trying to like i'm struggling to try and think of like which build i'd want to use that over like arachnid's mesh or string of ears or laying of hands that kind of thing now all these set item changes there's a lot i'm not gonna cover any of them you can read through i don't think that they're that good. I wouldn't really use them over any of the other stuff. But moving on to some of the changes to area levels. There is quite a few changes here. Some of them I think are really good. Some of them I just, I don't know. I don't know. Underground Passage Level 2. I'm not going to spend my time trying to map find this location every time. I'm not sure what the monster res is there. But I'm not going to waste my time. Stony Tomb Level 1 and 2. Solid choice. There's no fire means there. That's great for characters that don't have infinity. It's right outside of Luke Galen. You find it. Very easy. Good choice. Arachnid Lair, same as well. It's right next to the Spider Forest Waypoint. Easy to find. It's a large area. Pretty solid monster density. A really good choice for an Act 3 level 85 area. Swampy Pit's okay. The temples, these ones here that are all 84, jumped up to 85, they have zero monster density. So. I don't know about that one. The Act 3 Sewers Level 1 could be kind of cool. That is a pretty big area. Level 85, I'm going to try that. The Abaddon, Pit of Archeron, Infernal Pit are pretty good as well. I'm not sure about the pit of, if it's the Pit of Archeron or Infernal Pit, but one of these has the odd Lightning Immune, but I'm pretty sure that two of these in Act 5 don't have a single Lightning Immune. So you could play this as a Lightning character like a Nova Sorceress or Thunderstorm Sorceress without Infinity. So I think that's really cool. And Drifter Cavern and Icy Cellar, I touched on these recently. These are great areas that don't have any fire moons for fire damage dealing specs. Except the Drifter Cavern has, I think, one fire moon, but Icy Cellar has none. So that's really good to see more optimal areas and especially some extra love for the fire builds. And then everything else, there's just some changes here about tooltips and that kind of thing. But overall, that's kind of like my main thoughts. Again, I know this is a pretty rushed, not edited video, but there's a ton of to cover. I think we're at 30 minutes already, just me blabbering. But that's a lot of the highlights. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Again, let me know in the comment section below if you guys agree, disagree, or would like to see anything changed. Other than that, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on PTR. Peace out.